course today we're going to talk about how you can use equations to help solve simple economic problems. What I've got on the board behind me is a supply and demand graphic that illustrates how the market for roses works. Um, and in any market, uh, what you have is you have an equilibrium price that's established right over here in the marketplace. We'll call it P1 and a quantity Q1. Of course, these graphs for the demand curve and the supply curve can also be expressed as equations. That's what we're going to do right now. We're going to take demand curve D1 here and think of it as being the expression $90 minus 2 times the price. And we're going to think of the supply curve right here, S1, as simply being a function of the price itself. If we'd like to solve for the equilibrium value, what we need to do is we need to set these two equations equal. So to find the equilibrium point, D1 should be set equal to S1. That's 90 minus 2P is equal to P. Collecting the terms, we get 90 is equal to 3P. And then solving here, divided by 3, we get the price should be 30. So I'm going to go ahead and put that over here. Here's $30. And at a price of $30 for, say, a dozen roses, what we want to know is how many roses would the average person buy, which is, of course, solving for Q. And so in order to solve for Q in this particular case, we've got to plug back P into either D1 or S1. So I'll plug P equals 30 into D1, excuse me, and what we get is 90 minus 2 times 30, which is 90 minus 60, which is a quantity of 30. So I'm going to put that in right here. And the nice part about working with equations is that you can also double check your math. So let's also plug P is equal to 30 into S1. S1 up here is just the price. So when we plug 30 in for the price, we get S1 is also equal to 30. And of course that should make sense to you, right? Because the quantity supplied should also be equal to the quantity demanded when we get Q1. Now the reason that I've chosen to look at the market here for roses is because that market undergoes a pretty radical change right around Valentine's Day and also again right around Mother's Day. So let's imagine that the demand curve is much, much higher. And we'll just put this up here as Valentine's Day. What we want to try to do is we want to try to figure out what the new price and the new equilibrium quantity would look like. So here was our first equilibrium. This is now our second equilibrium. And we want to try to figure out what the new price is going to be. Our graphic tells us, and of course our intuition tells us as well, that if the there's a change in demand and people want to buy a whole, much, a whole bunch more roses, the price has to rise. And at the same time, since a whole bunch of people want to buy these, the number that will get sold in the marketplace should also rise. So to solve for this, let's then change a little bit of the math that we've done. I'll go ahead and erase this right here. And let's come up with the new equation for demand. And in this case, I'm going to write the new equation as 180 minus 2p. The process is exactly the same. So let's go through this again. We want to find out where d2 is now equal to s1. We didn't shift the supply curve, so we use the same equation. And we'll set 180 minus 2p is equal to p. We'll collect terms like we did before. We'll divide by 3 and we'll get the price is equal to 60. I'll go ahead and write that over here. That's a number that should make sense to you. The price is in fact higher, and in fact if you wanted to get a dozen roses delivered right on Valentine's Day, you'd pay a lot more money uh, to get that service provided. So now we have the price is 60. Now we're interested as well in trying to determine what the new equilibrium quantity is. So I can do one of the two things I did before. I need to plug price is equal to 60 into either D2 or S1. Right, so D2 intersects S1 right here. So we want to figure out the new quantity Q2. 
And we expect that value to be higher. So let's see if our intuition is confirmed. I'll put in the D2 first. And so we've got D2 is equal to 180 minus 2 times the new price, which is 60, which is 180 minus 120. And so in this case, the, the new quantity for DQ is 60. I'll go ahead and write that right here. If you're not convinced that that's correct, you could also plug P is equal to 60 into S1, and S1 is just equal to the price, and of course the price that we're plugging in here is 60, and so S1 is also 60, 60 and 60 checks. We verify the numbers, and we can feel very confident that in fact we have the right answer here, that the increase in demand has caused the price to rise and also resulted in a larger quantity produced in the marketplace. I hope this was helpful to you in thinking about the connections between shifting demand curves or supply curves and how we take equations to represent those functional forms and solve those to come up with real answers that make sense. Have a good day.